Greetings, everyone. Happy Tuesday to you. This morning, I want to talk to you about something I've been studying now for a while in the Bible, and that is the futility of worshiping false gods. Um, I'm fascinated by this subject, and as I read through the books of Chronicles and Kings and Psalms, I see much is written about how God thinks uh, of people who worship other things beside him. Um, God is not mocked, and we need to understand that uh, he is a very jealous God, and we as Christians know that we need to put him at the forefront of everything in our lives. We need to worship him alone. Uh, would you turn with me to the book of Psalms 115? I'm going to read you uh, verses 4 through 8, and later on we're going to read Psalm 135, uh, verses 19 through 21. Uh, Psalm 115, 4 through 8. But their idols are silver and gold made of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk, nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so all who trust in them. Um, there is a striking contrast between the God of the Bible and the false gods of all the other religions uh, of the world. And this has been going on for since the beginning of time. And it's no different today than it was back then. We may not worship statues uh, or uh, golden graven images, but uh, believe it or not, some people do. Uh, there are many in the secular society who worship everything from money, greed, power, sex, uh, to just about anything you could think of. Uh, child sacrifice is still going on today. Uh, drinking children's blood is, is a popular thing among some celebrities in Hollywood, believe it or not. Uh, it's, uh, it's ridiculous uh, when you hear what is really going on in our society, and it's frightening. And I hate to be so blunt, but this, these are the things that are going on, and this is what the result of worshiping false idols creates. Um, See, so regardless of the value of the statue that they created or the image that they created uh, back in the Old Testament, despite the fact that they may have used diamonds, precious gems, rubies for, for part of it, uh, the statue itself may have been made of gold or silver or bronze or some precious metal. Uh, regardless of what the statue looked like and how much it was worth, it could not do anything for the people that created it. It could not duplicate what God, a holy God, could do. Um, as a matter of fact, the people that created these statues and these idols uh, had more power than the statues they produced. So it was a pretty futile effort, as it is today as it was back then. Um, if these idols could not see, how could they know the wants and the desires of the people they were supposed to help and represent? Um, how wretched that people would actually bow down um, to an image that was blind or could not speak. Um, I read a story online about a missionary in India uh, who happened upon a group of people one day in their temple worshiping at the feet of a, uh, uh, an idol. And he walked over to it, and without being disrespectful, he put his hand on the eyes of the statue, and he looked at the people and he said, you know, your God that you're worshiping right here, he has eyes, but he can't really see anything. He put his hand on the nose of the statue and said, he has a nose, but he can't smell. He put his hands on the mouth of the idol and said, he has a mouth, but he can't speak anything. And the people just looked at him in amazement and realized what he was saying was true. They couldn't argue with that. Uh, one of the people that was listening to this was a Brahmin priest 
um, who then after hearing this walked over to the statue and he put his hands on his feet and said, and he has feet and he can't even walk away. Uh, the people were amazed at this and they stunned, walked out of the temple and went on about their way. The moral of this story is that if we worship thing that, things that people produce, we, we will become as empty and as impotent as the things that we worship. Uh, to put anything above our God, anything in creation, whether it's wealth, fame, or power, and the place of a holy God will ultimately destroy us. You see, we are called to worship God alone. And in the craziness and in the uh, things that we are seeing and hearing and reading about um, in our society today, uh, it is very even more important now than it's ever been that we stand for the righteousness of Christ, not for the whims of the world. What we see out there is frightening. And it's, and it's the reason why our society is falling apart. It's because people are worshiping the wrong things. They are, they are driven by their hate for other people groups. They are driven by their desire for power and for, uh, and for things that of, uh, like money and, 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 and things that are not of God. Uh, God wants us to be happy. He wants us to be productive. He wants us to provide for our families. He wants our children to grow, to worship him. And we have to understand that he alone is worthy of our worship. Turn with me now to uh, Psalm 135, and we're going to read verses 19 through 21. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. Bless the Lord, of, O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. You who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord out of Zion, who dwells in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Psalm 135, 19 through 21. My Tuesday thought is this. The futility of worshiping anything other than a holy God is pointless. When we put anything above God, we set ourselves up for failure. Psalm 135 says that all should bless the Lord. Every human being on this planet should be worshiping God. It's our job in these last days to get out there and bring those people to the foot of the cross, to have give them a chance of salvation to give them a chance to have an intimate relationship with the true and living God, a God that actually hears and sees and is, and is willing to uh, help us in our every, every need. God sent his son into this world to die for the world, but he also sent him into this world to save us. And we need to understand that anything that we put above him is an abomination to a holy God. So today, realize this, that he gave us life and life abundantly so that none would be left behind. Thank you and God bless you and have a great week. See you, see you soon.